It's quarter to eight in the morning and it's freezing. Wow, it is a cold day today. I don't know if the sun will come through the clouds later, but it's cold at the moment. The thing is with the narrowboat, it's really warm inside, especially yesterday because I'd had the engine on all day long. Woke up this morning and I could have took someone's eye out. So we're leaving Marbury and heading towards Hurlston Junction. So the first lock of the day now, I'm just walking up to the lock. And just after this lock, we bump into a fellow narrowboat YouTuber. It's Taylor's aboard! So I've just moored up now because we've spotted the Taylors. So we're going to go now and say hello to them, see if they're in. Um, yeah, it'd be great to meet them because I love these guys. If you do look at the channel, follow it. It's called Taylor's Aboard. They just do it as it is, straight out. Just This is boat life and I think it's fantastic. And it was so lovely to meet those guys. Absolutely amazing. This is a fabulous little place to visit. You can just moor up and walk across Thank that lift bridge much. to get there. And they sell logs and sticks too, so it's brilliant. And I've just come through the bridge and I meet another YouTuber friend of mine. All right, what are you doing here? Here he is, say hello Steve. Hi, hi. So that was Steve from the YouTube channel Slow Boat Through Britain. Absolutely lovely channel. I met Steve when I was in Hebden and Tomerden last winter. If I want to see what a canal's like before I go there, then Steve's videos are great for that because he shows you all the scenery. So well worth checking out. I will put a link in the description. What I'm really enjoying about having all the different vloggers on the canals is everyone brings something different. Five different vloggers can do the same canal and all doing it from a different perspective. So now arrived at Hurlston Locks. These are the four locks that bring you onto the Langothlan or takes you off it. So that's it. Let's just have a quick look, see if that Elson's been fixed. Because last time we were here, we were in a bit of a, we are getting a full toilet. Let's have a look. Oh no, it's still out of order. And uh, I've been on the Langothlan for about seven weeks now. Seven weeks, it took me seven weeks to get all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top, taking me time, stopping places to trade visiting all the villages, having an exploration, chilling out, having a really lovely time. But I've come all the way down in about five days. Wow. But life's not to be rushed, is it? It's about taking your time. Anyway, we're going to be turning right on the Shropshire Union and heading towards Audlem. That's where we're going next. Well, that's the plan. Every day's an adventure. So this is it everyone, this is the last lock on the Langothlan. Wee! Bye bye golly! Well, that's it, we're done. And I recognise another boat vlogger, and this is Narrowboat Tales from Forgo Narrowboating. So I've just had a few things come up on my uh, phone about stoppages. There seems to be a lot of uh, stoppages happening. And we wanted to go around the four counties, and suddenly now there's a stop on the Shroppy, um, which is what we're going to go round. But the North does seem to be suffering a lot recently with their locks breaking and water levels. Maybe that's due to lack of maintenance, I don't know. But the thing is, the Canal and River Trust have only got so much money. You just need to spend a little bit more up north, I think. <laughs> Us northerners, we need it! So, yeah, we'll see. It's part of the adventure, isn't it? Sometimes it's all an adventure. One of the best adventures I ever had was when I was on the map one year and I got stuck in a tree. I'd blocked the canal path. Not the canal, I was stuck there for about four or five days met some cracking people. We had a big fire pit, washing machine drum on the towpath. 
yeah and some of them now are friends for life so these things happen and you're just going to make the best of the situation <laughs> So I'm now moored up at the lovely Nantwich, back again, and I've got a load of my pirate stuff out. It is the end of the season now, but I thought I'd get some out anyway, but I'm moored right next to, let me show you, let me show you. Do you recognize these little fellas? It's Chipster Whipster and Daily Whaley. And look at the boat. It's Gary Captain Phillips. And he's just over here, so let me uh, introduce you. If you've not watched his channel yet, you need to watch it. Fabulous guy. And this is about my fourth vlogger that I've met in this last week. Absolutely fabulous. And here he is now with Pudding. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to pinch your dog, Heidi. <laughs> pudding is adorable. Look at Pudding. He's just a beautiful little yeah, boy. He hasn't got his tongue out today, though. Look at it out a little bit. Oh, it's out a little bit. There it is. <laughs> He's gorgeous. Heidi's trying to convert me to a pirate. I think he's already a sort of pirate at heart, but he's just not admitting to it. <laughs> so Daily Whaley, Chipster Whipster and Pudding all <laughs> met each other and they became mate. the best of friends. And I think Chip and Dale did realise that Pudding was an old man because they were very good with him and very gentle. And Pudding got loads of loves and cuddles off his uncle Gary. So he loved it here. We also met the lovely Malcolm. And because it was such a lovely day, we all sat out and had a few drinks and a catch up and a good chat. And it was really, really lovely. Basically planning what we're going to do for the next few days because we knew there was a big storm coming. So guys, we're leaving Nantwich now um, before this storm comes. I just want to say though, this week's Pirate Crew, I just want to say a massive thanks to Paul and Laura, Kirsty and Chris, Chris and Denise, Chief Vince, Ralph Ward, Stuart and Carol in Spain. Ooh. Sorry, Neil Parkey, Charlie and Kathy, Ted and Sonia, Alan Harbit, Melanie Spruce, and Marcia Nelson. Thanks so much, guys. So come on, let's go. Let's get before this storm hits. So I'm off. I've secured all around my fire because my fire's lit at the moment. I always make sure before I set off that anything around the fire can't fall onto it because I've heard of stories in the past where somebody's been cruising and hit a lock gate and their underpants have fallen on top of the fire and caught caught lights. So you just gotta be careful. But anyway we've got this big wind, this storm coming in and it's still windy today um, but it's a lot less now um, but tonight I think we've got 39 mile an hour winds coming in. So I've got to make sure that I want to be where I want to be for the next five days because that's apparently how long it's going to last. So uh, at least I get somewhere moored up near some friends and then we can sit out this storm. Where's this wind come from? I'm only going up here just to turn around. I've got to come back again. <laughs> oh, I hate it. Give me the rain any day, but not, but not the wind. <laughs> oh. That's why you have this. Blew off my head then. Not good. So the place where you turn a boat on a canal is called a winding hole. And this is a perfect example of how it works. I've put my nose, the bow of my boat, into the wind and using the wind to help me to turn. I haven't got anything posh on my boat like a bow thruster or anything like that. So I'm just using the wind to just get me round. I think if the wind was coming from the other direction it would have been a completely different story but because it was perfect now this is how I used it.
when I said give me the rain over the wind any day, I changed my mind. <laughs> I feel really sorry for the hire boaters that have hired in this weather because the ones that hired this week is nothing but be rain. <laughs> so I feel really sorry you spent all that money and you just get a week of this. Ah oh well, joy's about it. So just moored up at the water point, gonna get water, it's still hammering it down, still windy. <laughs> joy's. When you know you're going to get stuck somewhere for a few days, it's really important to make sure you've got a full tank of water and your toilets are empty. Well, I'm wetter than a mermaid's booth. Well, guys, the after we came off Langotham, we're going to turn right, head towards Audlin, and uh, go around the four counties before I was out for blacking in about four weeks' time. That was the plan. However, a lot collapsed at Audlin, which then stopped us being able to get where we wanted to go, and it's put us a bit behind schedule. So, because I've already paid my deposit for blacking, I was really scared that I was going to miss that by getting stuck behind some sort of stoppage. So we've uh, scrapped that idea and we've turned around now and we're going to be heading to um, back basically slowly to the weaver i'm going to mess about on the weaver for a bit i mean this is the thing why you don't make plans when you're boating really because things happen and um, i don't tend to make that many plans anymore i just go where the the water takes me and just <laughs> blag it really So where are we going, Jax? We're going for a little drinky poos on a Sunday afternoon and listen to some live music. Yeah, but going up to Venetian. Wait. He can't wait, he's so excited. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I've got the, what I've got. Woohoo, my little lip flask. So uh, that'll save on some of the pennies. So yeah, what else is there to do on a Sunday afternoon? So as you can see, the sun is shining and the weather's beautiful and we're going to Venetian now to meet the other boaters and have a nice drink. But then the heavens open, but like good boaters they are, they still stayed and had a good time in the rain. <laughs> 